want to give a shout out. We had mentioned in our announcement video that we have a, an amazing uh, food pantry ministry. Uh, it's awesome. Let's give a hand to those who serve in our food pantry ministry and uh, uh, you know, feed, I don't know how many families, 40, 50 people a, a, a month. And uh, through our food pantry ministry, you guys provided five turkeys and everything to go with it for a full Thanksgiving meal for five families. Can we give God praise for that? It's wonderful to be a blessing. And so that goes right on into our, ser- our series that we're in. This is our, our second week on generosity. Living to give is living to love. And I want to encourage you, uh, when you uh, on Sunday mornings, grab a worship guide. It has all of, our, all of our connect groups and ministries on there that you may be interested in plugging into on the front. Then on the back, there's a, a place where you can take notes. Um, and it's important to take notes and go home and, and decipher the Word of God for yourself. But we're going to continue with generosity. Living to give is living uh, to love. And today I want to speak to you. Uh, from a message entitled, God's Love, My Worth. God's Love, My Worth. So if you will, take just two seconds, look at the person next to you and say, God's Love, My Worth. All right, all right. If you have your Bibles, let's take them out. Let's turn to John chapter 3. God's Love, My Worth. This is what we'll be talking about today. Genesis chapter 3. We're going to read, once I tell you the verses... Most of you are not going to turn there because it's Genesis, uh, John chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. John chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. Let's read it or quote it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want to focus on a few words here for a moment. I want to focus on... for. Uh, for God, oh, wait, 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 let's look at 17. That's very important. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. That's good news. So, come on, somebody. But that the world through him might be saved. So let's go back to verse 16, and I want to focus on a few words. The Bible says, For God so loved, for God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world that he gave gave. Love is always expressed through giving. Always. When you love somebody, you, are, you will be motivated to give. Love turns into a fire in your heart and behind your butt that just wants you to give when you love somebody. I love Elizabeth so much, I, I can't help. I, baby, I'm, let me do them dishes. Oh, you, you don't feel good? I, I'll cook. Come on. Uh, or, or when I walk by Kroger and I see them, them roses, especially when they're on sale. Come on, somebody. <laughs> hey, watch out now. No, you don't know no different when you, when you tear the sticker off and take that wrapping off with a nice vase? Come on, be wise, somebody. Be wise. <laughs> but, uh, but motivate me to grab them roses. And the other day I, I had some roses and went to Kroger, got some, just because, right? Just because I love her. Because she's, she's worth it. She's awesome. She's amazing. I went and picked her up from work. Put her right beside the curb on, on Broad Street where you're not supposed to park. <laughs> and she, she gets in the car and the rose is sitting right there on, on the seat. Boy, she got so happy. She felt so loved because her love language is gifts and, and she loves surprises. But love, when, when love is in your heart for somebody or something, you can't help but to want to invest in that person, but want to give. And God so loved you and I that he gave to us. And he didn't just give a gift. He gave his very best gift. He gave his only son. Love always generates generosity. Now, there's one thing to give to somebody, but there's another thing to give generously to somebody. Now, we defined this last week, but I want to pop up the definition for generous. And let's look at that. The word generous defined means... Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It means uh, freely giving or sharing money and other valuable things, providing more than the amount that is needed or normal, abundant or ample, showing kindness and concern for others. So when you someone gives generously, they they give above and beyond the need. 
It's, it's giving an ample supply. It's going above and beyond what somebody needs or even what they expect. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, to him who is able to give exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that you and I could ask or think. That's the God that we're talking about this morning. And he so loves you and I that he gives to us on a daily basis. If we'll let him, he gives above and beyond generously. Come on, give Jesus praise for that. God gives and God gives us his best always. That's the very first point I, I want to talk about this morning. God gives us his best. He never gives leftovers. But he always gives us the very best. He's not a get-by kind of God. He's not a I'll just meet your needs kind of God, which he promises that he he will. The Bible says that he promises to meet our needs according to his riches in glory. He don't just want to give us our needs, but he wants to give us the desires of our heart according to Psalms 37.4. God always gives the best gifts and he gives generously. And our worth is always revealed in God's giving or in God's gift. God didn't just give us His Son. It wasn't that like God had 100 sons to choose from. And He picked the youngest, most feeble, that no one else liked. That, that <laughs> but He only had one. And His Son, Jesus, was his loved son, his most prized son, his perfect son, come on, his best son, sinless son, spotless son, that he loved. Jesus was God, was God the Father's everything. He loved him with, with, with all that he is and all that he was. And God gave him to us, put him on a cross to be beaten, to be broke apart, so that you and I could come into his family to be his children. So God's giving His only Son shows us just how much He thinks we're worth. He thinks we're, 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 we're so valuable and worth so much that He gave us His everything. You know, the price of a car, the price of a chair, the price of a shirt is really whatever somebody's uh, willing to pay for it. It was almost, it's almost as if I was thinking about this yesterday. You know, my truck's probably worth four, four or $5,000 on a good day. But hey, it's paid off. Come on, somebody. But yeah, that's very special. <laughs> I, I can give it away anytime God tells me to. Woo! But anyway, uh, so my truck's probably worth four or $5,000. But it's almost as if, you know, if somebody was to come to me and say, hey, I know, uh, you know, others think that your truck's worth four or 5000 Looking on Kelly Blue Book, they say in good condition, 4500 4, But, you know, I think your truck's way more valuable than, than that. I just love GMC Canes. I love this year model. I love the color. I love everything about it. I want to give you $1 billion for your truck. I think it's that. So, baby, show me the money. <laughs> Here you go. It's yours. But, that, but that, that, that's, what, that's how much God thinks about us, and that's what he did for us. Some of you, uh, your, your parents may not, may not think you're valuable. Friends, co-workers may not think you're valuable. But God thinks you're so valuable that he was worthy to give you something that is far above any money. You can't put a price on it. He's, he gave you his very gift, his only son, because he thought you and I was that, was that valuable and precious to him. And we are. God's love his giving to us and for us reveals our worth in Him and to Him. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, because we see it right here. The Apostle Paul, through the Holy Spirit, uh, lays it out amazingly here. He says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare His own Son, come on, He didn't spare Him, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? 
When God gave Jesus to you and I, to humanity, He gave us everything. And in Jesus, you can find life, you can find healing, you can find rest, you can find joy, you can find peace, you can find direction, you can find everything you need or possibly desire in Jesus. And if He gave Jesus up, you better believe that He's not withholding any other good thing from you and I. He is a God who is loved, that loves you and thinks you are valuable, hallelujah, and wants to, and wants to lavish you with his blessings and his gifts and he's already given his son and in his son he wants to give you er everything hallelujah God gave Jesus to the world so that he could give through Jesus to the world I'm going to say that again God gave Jesus to the world so that he could give through Jesus to the world Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving He was God's more than, more than enough gift to humanity. That's why Jesus said things like this right here. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said things like, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Because when God gave Jesus to us, his plan was to give through Jesus to us. And Jesus was the Jacob's ladder that extends from heaven to earth. Jesus was God's plan to connect heaven to earth. Jesus is the door that we get to the Father. That's why the Word of God says, boldly approach God's throne so that you may attain grace and mercy in the time of need. He, he gave Jesus so that we could have access to His throne, to His kingdom, to His life, to His blessings. And in and through Jesus, we have an inheritance as children of God. Woo, thank you, Lord. God brought the door from heaven, and he brought it. Can I have three people to run up here real quick and help me with the illustration? Thank you. Will you come up here? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, y'all, come on. Man, I praise the Lord. All right. Walt, if you don't mind, you're going to be God the Father. John, if you don't mind, you're going to be the door right here. And uh, Sheila, if you don't mind, you're going to be God's beautiful daughter. All right. So God says, I love Sheila so much, Adam and Eve messed it up. <laughs> and there's, there's been a blockade for generations. There's, there's been, my presence has been dwelling in a box for thousands of years. There's, there's a veil in my temple that separates people because of their sin from my presence. And for thousands of years, <laughs> people had to go, go uh, carry an animal to a priest and the animal was sacrificed. The blood was shed. The priest would take that blood, go behind the veil, put it on the mercy seat of the altar to atone for that person's sin for a year. But God said, you know what? Enough is enough. Now it, it's time. I'm sending a door. I'm sending a gateway where no human being will ever have to go through another human being to come into my presence or for their sins to be atoned for. And I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to send a door that's going to shed his blood so that uh, all of humanity's sins could be washed away. So that through his blood, so that through his name, so that through his presence, so that through his word, my children could have access to me whenever they want to, as long as they want to. I'm going to become one with them. I'm going to give them a door. I'm going to give them access because I never want my children to be apart from me ever ever again so God brought a door or Jesus to the earth because we didn't have it within ourselves to get to God so God says you know what you can't get to me in your good works your righteousness is as filthy rags I'm going to give my sinless spotless son who is the door I'm bringing the door to the earth that's why Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life I want to listen I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you this verse. That's why Jesus said in John 10 and 9, I am the door. Listen at this. Ooh, I love it. This is good news. Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he or she will be saved. Amen. And will go in. You can come in. In the door. Open up door. We'll, we'll come in. <laughs> And hang out with the Father and receive life from the Father and direction and joy. And come out, and the Father actually comes with her. Come in and out and find green pastures. Because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When Jesus, 
And when God gave Jesus, He gave us a door. He gave us access so that we will never be without anything in life. Is that good news? Can we give, can we give God praise and thanks for these beautiful people? Y'all did a great job. Thank you so much. Y'all did a wonderful, wonderful job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about how valuable you are. How valuable you are. Despite your wrongdoings, despite your mistakes, despite what you did yesterday. It doesn't change your value and worth to God. He sent Jesus to die on the cross while we were yet sinners. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Ooh, he loves us. Not only does God give us his best gift and our worth is revealed in God's giving, but God's worth to us is revealed in our giving to him. God's worth to us is revealed in our giving to him. I'm telling you, when you taste and see that the Lord is good, you can't help but to want to give, invest into others and share what he's given to you the, uh, to others. That's why Jesus said that love is not that you've loved me, but that I first love you. Because you can't give what you don't have, but once you've experienced the love of God and you receive of his love daily, boy, it'll just flow through you like a water hose out to everyone you come in contact with and back to him. Just like God never gives us his leftovers, we should never give him our leftovers. We should give him our best in everything that we do. If it's a musician leading worship, we should prepare beforehand. We should dedicate enough time to prepare. And then when we get up here, we're ready to give God our best. Why? Because he's worthy of our best. Why? Because he's not just Lord. He's not just God. He's not just king. He's the king of kings. And he deserves the very best of our gifts. We should give him the best of our time and our day. We should give him the best of our gifts and our talents. All of us have gifts and talents that God has put on the inside of us for his glory. And we should do our best to give those back to him and let him and let those bring him glory. We should bring God our best offerings. Whether it's offering of praise, of thanksgiving from our heart. We should come in here on Sunday mornings because we understand who we're worshiping. And because he is worthy of the best. We come in here, we give him our best hallelujah. Our, our best hand clap. Come on, somebody. Our best praise the Lord. Our best dance. Hey! Because I've experienced the love of God. I can't help myself. Our finances, we should give our best offering. I think about uh, the uh, three wise men. We're coming up on Christmas, and we, we see the Christmas plays and the, uh, the uh, 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 nativity scenes on people's mantles. Maybe you have one. Maybe you put it up after Thanksgiving, or maybe you put it up before. We put up our tree before Thanksgiving. We couldn't help ourselves. Uh, I had a friend that told me this. He said, he said I told my wife... <laughs> He said, uh, I know we're busy, but even if, if I have to stay up to 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm not going to put up the tree till after Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, but uh, the three wise men, think about it. Soon as, as Jesus hit the earth, soon as Mary birthed Jesus, Jesus came onto the scene as a little baby. There were three wise men that God ordained, that God led by a star to where Mary and Joseph was. And when they got to him, they didn't come to him with a dime. They didn't come to him with a quarter. They didn't come to him with a, praise the Lord, the King of kings, the God that created the universe is here among me. Man, you look good. They didn't come to him and say, oh, the King of the universe is here. It's great to be in your presence. No, when they came to him, they came to him bringing gold, frankincense, myrrh. They came to him with their very, very best. Why did they do that? Because they understood his worth. They said, this is the king of kings, and he's worthy of our very, very best gift. I will not come into the king's 
presence without offering him something that costs me something. That's, what, that's why uh, David in the Psalms, that's why he said, I will not offer God anything that doesn't cost me something. Because our gift reveals his worth to us. And his worth is revealed to us by our, our giving. So God's given us the best. And when, you, when you've experienced his best, I'm telling you, your heart, you just want to give him your best. Because he's worthy of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just meditating here if I need to share this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's move on. <laughs> I always got to follow the Lord here, you know. Uh, the third thing is important for us to understand when talking about God's love and our, our worth is that God doesn't withhold anything good from us. Let's look at Psalms 8411. This Holy Spirit through King David here, he says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. When I read this earlier this week, this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me through that. The Lord God is my provider and my protector. He is a sun and a shield. Hallelujah. Hey, He's my provider and my protector. And I'm telling you, if God is your provider, you never have to worry about doing without. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if God, that's why the Bible says in Romans 8, if God be for you, who can be against you? Because when he's the one protecting you, I'm telling you, no matter who comes against you, you're going to be okay. He said he's a sun and a shield. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. We are made righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. You can say it this way. He will not withhold any good thing from those who live by faith in Jesus. Because righteousness comes only one way. It's not by our works. It's through faith in Jesus. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, in the very beginning, Satan found access in, into, uh, into uh, uh, Adam and Eve's life. He was able to deceive them, the master de- de- uh, deceiver, because he got, them, he got them questioning God's love for them. He came to them, and the first thing he told Eve, he said, Has God said? And that's what he does. He'll come to you, and he'll, 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 he'll say, You know what? You know what? I, yeah. Are you sure God, God's word says that give and it will be given back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over you? Are you sure? That just doesn't make sense. Are you sure you're to love your enemies because, I mean, they don't deserve your love. He'll get you questioning God's word, God's love, and his ability to provide for you. He got her questioning. And before she knew it, she started wondering. Well, yeah, did God say that? Did he say not eat from this tree? Will I surely die? This serpent said I won't die. It'll be good. And then when he, when he got her uh, 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 questioning that because he, he told her, he said, uh, are, you, are you sure you die? No, you won't die. What will happen is you'll just become like God, knowing, knowing good and evil. So he got her questioning the word of God and, and questioning God's faithfulness and his love for her. Is God holding out on me? Has God truly given us everything? Is there, is there knowledge that I don't have that God has, but I need to have? So he got her uh, downing, he got her in doubt and unbelief, and therefore she sinned. And that's his biggest tactic today with you and I. If he can sow doubt and unbelief to get us questioning God's word, the validity of God's word, God's faithfulness, his love for us. Is God holding back on me? Will God do this if I obey his word? Then he can cause us to doubt God's word and and cause us to live in fear and keep from moving forward and being obedient to the Lord. And when we walk in doubt and unbelief, we end up tying God's hands in our life. And that's his biggest tactic. But I got good news for you today. The devil is a liar. He is the father of lies. 
The truth is not in him. He can't tell the truth. And I'm telling you, this word right here is the truth. It is the absolute truth. Heaven and earth will pass away, but this word will stand forever. If you find a promise in here, baby, you can bank on it. You, you, if you act upon any promise in here, God will come through at the right time for you. And he won't just come through, but he'll do above and beyond anything you could ask or think. Let's give God some praise because his word is true. And he's not withholding anything. I love James 1.17. This is an awesome verse. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Amen. Down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. He don't just give, he gives good gifts. I'll never forget. You know, if God does withhold something from you and I, it's because it, it, it's harmful to us. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was harmful to Adam and Eve. He gave them everything else, but he said, stay away from this tree. Hallelujah. If he's holding anything, it's because it's harmful. He doesn't hold anything good. Um, my, uh, I remember when I was in uh, middle school, you know, growing up all my life, my dad would tell me, son, you know, uh, stay away from alcohol. It's not good for you. Stay away from drugs. So, you know, don't dip tobacco. We, we, we put... Uh, braces on your teeth for a reason. Try to help you with a wife. Tobacco will ruin your teeth. Make your breath stink. And if you chew tobacco, you know, I'm not making fun of you. I don't even know who chews tobacco in here. <laughs> but, 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 so God, my dad gave me some instruction to help me. He wanted, because he loves me and wants me to be successful. So I never tried tobacco until middle school. All, all the cool kids, the older kids, would sit on the back of the bus. You know, and they dip down low. They, they take about three sheets of, of notebook paper. They'd wind it up at the bottom and bend it, you know, make a funnel out of it. Look like they're ready to change, uh, change their oil in their car. And, and they would sit in the back and they would, they would uh, uh, dip tobacco and spit in the, the paper funnel. You know, and I was like, man, I know my dad told me not to chew tobacco, but I want to be cool. <laughs> I don't want to be lame. You know, I want to hang out with the, the big boys, the big dogs, you know. I want to sit on the back of the school bus. <laughs> so one day I went back there, and I said, they said, hey, Brandon, you, you, want, you want some dip? It, it was that, uh, that wintergreen, the, uh, Kodiak wintergreen. <laughs> that fine stuff. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, you know, I can do this. I act like I've been doing it my whole life, you know. <laughs> so they, they, get, they gave me that dip, and uh, I said, man, because I, I, had, I had practice with my cousins, you know, because you ain't, you ain't cool unless you can do that. <laughs> you pack that dip down, you know, and then some folks can do it with two fingers. I couldn't do, I couldn't do the two-finger thing. <laughs> so, so, so I grabbed it. I said, man, let me pack this for you. I got to pack it. Make sure everybody can see I can pack it, you know. I said, look at this, I'm a big boy, I'm a big boy, I'm, yeah. So I, I, Pastor Steve, I got that dip out, I put me a big wad right there, you know. I, 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 I got down real low, I'm dipping now, boys. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm riding low, baby, I ride low. Some of you are like, boy, that's all you've ever done bad, you all right. So I, I was dipping low, and then... Uh, uh, the problem is, I didn't know that that stuff was going to get me nauseated. <laughs> and man, I was the, I, we lived way out in the country, so I was the last one to get off the bus. So I was on that bus a long time every day. And well, I'm, I'm dipping, and man, I'm starting to, everything's starting to go in circles, starting to see stars. I'm like, Lord Jesus, help me. I, I prayed this prayer. Y'all ever pray this? Lord, if you'll help me through this, I'll never do this again. <laughs> Man, I went crying out to God, boy. Woo. I finally got, got home, managed not to throw up. I don't know how. Just God help me. I, 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 uh, I said, now, what, what can I do so that my parents don't see that I'm you know, in this condition? So uh, I walked in the door. My mom said, hey, son, how was your day? It was good. Put my head down, went straight to my bedroom, laid down. 
until that, that, that nausea went away and things stopped spinning. But if I would have just heed to my father's instructions, I would not have gotten sick. But because I didn't, you know, I got sick and I had to suffer a little bit. But I tell you what, I ain't a fool. It only takes one time for me, baby. I didn't dip again. Hallelujah. We'll see you, sucker. I don't care if y'all think I'm cool or not. I ain't going through that again. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's the same way. If he's withholding anything from us in life, if he tells you, don't take that job, there's a reason. If he tells you, don't date that person, don't marry that person, there's a reason. If, if he tells you, hey, you know, invest this money into this ministry, there's a reason. But if God withholds anything from you, it's because he's trying to protect you. If he tells you to do something, then it's because he's trying to get blessings to you. But he will never, ever withhold anything. He doesn't withhold healing. He doesn't withhold pay raises. He doesn't withhold a good wife and a good husband. He doesn't withhold anything good from us. But boy, he gives it, and he gives it in abundance. If you believe it, say praise the Lord. Praise I'm going to leave you this morning. Uh, uh, with some scriptures here. I have a bunch of scriptures that, that's going to encourage you. Isaiah 53 and 5 says this, But he, Jesus, was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I got good news for you. If you've been suffering with any kind of sickness and, or disease, God has provided healing for you through Jesus, and you can have it today if you believe. If you believe it, say praise the Lord. Romans 5.8 says, God demonstrates his own love towards us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. i got good news for you. If you're here today and you will say, I'm a sinner, I do not know Jesus. I have good news for you. There is hope for you. There is a new future for you. There is a new start for you. That Christ died for you while you are in your sinful state because he loves you and he has a beautiful plan for your life. If you'll put your faith in Jesus today, you can begin a brand new life, free of sin, free of guilt, free of condemnation with Jesus Christ. Is that good news? If that's good, it just keeps getting better. Man, it'll make you want to go home and boy, eat this like it's a red velvet cake. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5.21 For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Second Corinthians 8.9 For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich... Yet for your sake, he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. If you're struggling financially today, if you've always struggled financially today, if you've got bills through the roof and you don't know how you're going to pay for it, I, I've got good news for you. God has laws. He has principles. He has, he has a way. If you'll discover his way and you abide by his way, God sent Jesus to become poor that you and I might become rich in him. If you believe it, say praise the Lord. Y'all didn't shout like you believed that one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. And why did he become a curse? Why did he hang on that tree? I'll tell you why. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That, that's you and me. We, we Gentiles. Unless, unless, you, unless you have a Jewish descendant here, then, then, then you're not. That we... <laughs> that thought I was going to say something profound, didn't you? That... <laughs> In case you didn't know. <laughs> oh, man. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. God's love, my worth. God's love reveals my worth. And He so loved us that He gave His only begotten Son. That those who believe him, in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. If you're thankful for the love of God this morning, will you give Jesus a big shout of praise as you stand on your feet?